is through reward or through language uh, or environment and pay more attention to actually how I do use it. Okay. Um, and, and of course, for what the motivation is, my motivation, what's, what's my agenda for any kind of control. And the other one is the other end That's of that. Pretty that's pretty risky and, and, and interesting. Uh, if I really, I, I definitely control the room, right. but I really want to know what I'm really up to. And the other side of the control is to give it over to them. And so I definitely will set up situations for the students to work with each other more. And in particular, something I just thought about that I've never really had them do because I do it for them is redo someone's work, someone else's. Instead of me saying, move this, move that. Right, 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 right. To actually, what I would like to do this Friday is I'm going to have them after they finish a project and we critique it, is say, now you swap and oh. redo someone's work and what would you change in it? Okay. And, and then you, somebody would say, well, I would have done this or that. You'll pro I'll probably find out that they would do it reluctantly because they don't want to touch somebody's work, but they would change it in a way they didn't even mention it. So that, that's what I... Okay. Cool. I have just something to throw out my thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> um, I, I like the idea of more um, student-led exercises. I've done this two or three so far and I just call it the group. I haven't done it enough. Right. So I'd like to work more of that into the classes. Um, and and. I'm in a situation where I might be able to, in the, um, in the academic skills thing, to actually let a student or two teach a portion of the class. So wow. I think that could be really wow. interesting. Yeah. Okay, good listening. And we know ourselves that, that there's no way to learn, better way to learn material than by having to teach yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a great tool. I tried that. <laughs> <laughs> I should change my mind. I asked somebody. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it's good. It's somebody with uh, sufficient courage to do it, uh, ask somebody to come up and explain their, their solution. It was a good solution to it, including myself. I mean, it was, you can't do that in the sphere of public speaking. I, I, I didn't push it. But what I, I have to look at my control, too. I teach, when I'm teaching Excel, I mean, there's a lot of mechanics involved in Excel. And uh, I think sometimes I hold on to Richard Paul says, don't be a mother bird chewing the stuff up <laughs> and then putting it in their mouth, <laughs> yeah. which I'm very good at doing. Oh, so am um, I. But, so, so. you know, and, and I tried to model that a little bit. Rather than telling you guys, you know, it's like, go look at this stuff, read it, and, you know, what are you getting out of it? I don't lecture out of the textbook. I have them develop what are the questions from the objectives and then go look for the answers. That's a much better use of an hour's worth of time than, than talking about it. That, that, that's what I do. I start to talk, and I rarely, I, I shouldn't say, I don't ever lecture out of the book, but I rarely lecture out of the book, and I, they keep waiting for me to say, all right, here's the book, and I'm going to start going through the book. This is not college learning. Good. Diane, what kind of thing could you do from this course? Well, I definitely agree with this, to control, reevaluating the purposes behind why I came on and like I mentioned earlier, just coming up with different options as ways that they can work on things. And, um, you know, it's interesting because before I was here, I used to teach middle school, and I would have real-life projects, and here I just haven't done any of that. And I'm thinking back, well, why not? Why can't I use some of those tools? I mean, I teach pre-algebra, and, you know, 
<coughs> I used to have them do projects where they would actually take pictures and then come up with their own problems with some criteria as to what would go with that particular thing of something out in the real world and tell me how to do the problem. And, you know, so I'm thinking about bringing some of that kind of stuff back into the How did your middle school students respond to that? Very well. I mean, we, we I taught an eighth grade course where um, we actually had we would go to Six Flags or something and there would be a science component the component for each thing but you know I would tell them they didn't have to carry a clipboard for me but a camera and they would have to take you know five pictures and you know because of course they have a camera and take pictures and come back and um, they had to use the Pythagorean theorem and something they you know so they had to right. use different things and come up with the picture and then create a problem to go with it that cool. would be relevant yeah, yeah. solve it really the kinesthetic learner the visual learner you're really hitting a lot of yeah a lot of types you of know things. and they had to be multi-step problems at that level they couldn't be just a yeah, yeah. you know picture of a soda how much did i pay it had yeah, to be an actual yeah, yeah. So know, some structure, criteria. but then they had some criteria to meet within it, but it was all up to them as to what they uh, chose and how they applied it. So uh, I, I think I need to look back at those kind of things and see why am I not doing that now. Have you? Well, any thoughts about anything yeah. you could take from this hour? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I teach a French, so I, I feel like it's uh, it detached to what is shared here, because uh, here you are trying to, you're, you're trying to, to, to teach a language. And unless the students are motivated, um, most of the time they, they cannot, they're not part of it, like uh, the grammatical structure. That can be very boring for most of the, most of the time. Uh -huh. So you have to come up with, uh, um, you, have, you have to like, Quit the uh, subject. You have to. You have to detach yourself from that structure to create some environment where students can think of something else, which is not just that structure. The the structure of say? learning French. No, no, no. I'm talking about grammar. When you talk, grammar? When, you, when you teach grammar. When oh, you teach grammar. grammar it's oh, like grammar. Uh, it's like very mathematical, it's like theories. Right. right. It can be very boring, very hard to understand. Uh -huh. That I'm just taking the example of this this term. I teach uh, intermediate levels here in New Falls, four classes, and I spend most much. I mean, most of the time I, I teach uh, grammar, and I did realize that uh, it gets very heavy and hard to digest. Uh -huh. So I come up with with uh, games. And I think, uh, and I go back to my uh, time when I was studying English. I think the motivation of learning was uh, reinforced by the teacher, I think, knowing that I'm interested, I'm motivated to, be, to, 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 to pinpoint me. He kept me motivated. He was always referring to me. And I tried to bring that to class. I think students need that one-to-one -one -one experience, one-to-one -one experience. Yeah kind of uh, connection yeah, yeah. to yeah. get the motivation to get the okay he knows yeah. that I'm here he, yeah. he wants me to get this yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's just one uh, aspect one of things of, uh, students, students will respond to is, is caring and mm. you know they're talking about caring about subjects Ted I'll well the um, the two were uh, focus on beauty utility or intrigue and you know with some of the material focusing on the utility is fairly you know natural um, so that was something that I took away to try and see what they think is utility from the subjects that we're learning. Um, and then the other one was giving them more control like everybody else, of course. Um, but um, in terms of their, well, when we do projects, you know, to give them more control. And I guess maybe even going beyond choosing the subject of the project, but also, you know, how they're going to approach it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Give them the control and uh, provide them with the assistance to get where they want to go. Yeah. But how, how, to, those, how to do that is hard. But, you know, I, yeah. I think erecting a framework, of a, erecting a structure, and then, and then, and then learning a, 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 a lot of
of freedom within that, that structure, I think, is, is, is correct. Well, hopefully this wasn't a, an hour where we get sat and went to hell right and how you wait until <laughs> this gets over. I, can I participate? I just wanted to add one thing that, that w through the reading that I want to add to mine is um, having them f make findings, because my students are always finding stuff out for me that I didn't know was out there to really change my position. I'm not the sage. I'm really the facilitator. And when they are sharing stuff with me, I. I want that to be sharing for everybody, and um, so that I'm going to have them do interviews, and they already are telling me all kinds of stuff I didn't know. So, yeah, it's good. You're teaching a class.